said that over these last days, through story, we've been exploring the nature of illusion. But to round off that exploration before moving on, <coughs> there's a couple of old stories that say it all insofar as illusion is concerned. So let's revisit them and see what they do for us. The first is that story about old Fred. He's 89 years old. But he falls in love with a young woman of 29. And after he proposes and then she accepts, they celebrate a, a big wedding. But after the reception, to save old Fred any embarrassment, his bride had booked a two-bedroom honeymoon suite for them. So in the evening, as they were retiring, they said goodnight to one another and went to their separate rooms. But just as the young bride was settling down to sleep, there was a knock on the door and old Fred comes in. They consummate their marriage in the most wonderful way. I think Fred was French. <laughs> <laughs> and then he huddles up to bed again. But just as she's settling down again, there's a knock on the door and Old Fred comes back in again and they make wonderful <coughs> love once again. And again, it happens three times, Old Fred comes in and they make wonderful love. He goes back and after a while there's another knock on the door. And after the fourth time, his bride said to him, Fred, you're a legend, you're absolutely amazing. I've been <coughs> with men half your age and they can only make love once and you've been able to make love four times. Old Fred said, have I? <laughs> so that other story is that old story about, you know, in, in the land of the rising sun a, a long, long time ago in a, a little, little hamlet nestled at the foot of a mountain where there was a, a little river running by. There was an old widow and his son, and they'd <coughs> lost their wife and mother many, many years ago, so they'd lived as, a, you know, two men together for, for a long, 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 long time, and they did very well, because, you know, after all, without a woman around, there was no one to tell them when to change their socks, and they could go fishing whenever they wanted to. And so it was a pretty good life for, for them. But one day, because the old man was growing very old, he called his son to him, and we'll call him Ado, called Ado to him, and he said, Ado, it, it, you have to get married. Well, Ada was quite true. He said, but Dad, we, we get on very well. We don't need a woman around. And you know that I'm afraid of women and I don't really like them very much. Well, his father said, son, tradition is tradition. Culture is culture. You have to get married. So it was arranged. One of the little girls, damsels, maidens from the village, was approached. He wasn't particularly beautiful, but it was said that she was kind and she was homely. So the wedding took place and and she took up residence with Edo and his father. But Edo really, for the most part, he totally ignored her until one day she presented to him his breeches that she'd repaired, patched up for him. And so he softened somewhat to her after that, and they became what you would say a, a reasonably happy uh, little family. But you know, time passed, and it came the time for the old man to leave 
the body which he did when Ada was absolutely, totally inconsolable. He was absolutely bereft and wept and wailed day and night until his dear wife did not know what to do with him. She tried everything to appease him, but nothing. She even one day t said to him, Husband, why don't you make a trip to Kyoto? And I don't want to go to Kyoto. Why would I want to go to Kyoto? He says, but after a couple of weeks, you know how men are. <laughs> he said, I think I might go to Kyoto. <laughs> <laughs> so she said, oh, what a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> and you know those little places not quite like the bazaars in the Middle East and all but you know dinky little places so he was wandering in the streets when he saw one of those shops that have everything that you can find and he was rather attracted to it so he was in there browsing around when he happened to find some, one of those objects that it was like a little metal thing and it had a little handle on it so he asked the proprietor you know, what's that? And the proprietor said, oh, this has just arrived from Turkey. He said, it's called a mirror. So Ada held it up in front of him. He said, Dad! <laughs> Dad, I've missed you. What are you doing in Kyoto? <laughs> oh, I've, I've longed to talk to you. Where have you, been? you been? Well, Ada was absolutely thrilled and delighted. So he, he immediately bargained with the proprietor and, and had it wrapped up in a beautiful piece of tissue paper and put it away. But Ada was very good. He didn't forget to buy a nice new kimono for his wife, which he took back to her. But uh, strangely enough, when he got back to their little hamlet, he omitted to tell her about his purchase and... But the, his wife began to notice that every evening he disappeared into his room and she could hear him laughing and talking and she wondered what was going on, but he remained quite silent about it. So you know what women are like too. When he went off fishing one time, she went into the chamber and she took it out of the drawer and ran, uh, unwrapped it and she heard, I knew it! Uh, he's got a woman in Kyoto. <laughs> <laughs> and she's not even beautiful. Look at her. Look at her face. <laughs> so, of course, after that, his wife gave him the silent treatment. She wouldn't speak to you know how women are to. <laughs> so he got really peeved about it. And finally he confronted her and said, What? What? is it with you, wife? What is it that's troubling you? So she marched him into the bedroom, she opened the drawer and took it out. Look, look, they, they, I knew it, you have, you have a woman in Kyoto. <laughs> She's not even beautiful. He said, no, 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 that's my dad, that's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> and so they got into a really, very heated argument, so loud that all the neighbors could hear them and the neighbors came over to see what was going on, and they each giving, the, he, he's got a woman, in, and, and yes, it's my dad, and no, and back and forth and back and forth until someone amongst the neighborhood said, well, look, down at the monastery, there's this old abbess. She's very, very wise. I'm sure she can settle this for us. So, so Edo, his wife, and the neighbors, they all marched down to the monastery, and, there's the old abbess sitting across at her table. How can I help you, my children? <laughs> and they told their story. And they took out the mirror and they handed it to the old abbess. She held it up and said, Oh, that poor woman. She's feeling so remorseful about stealing you your husband that she shaved her head and become a man. <laughs> 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 Just 
leave her here <laughs> with me and we'll take care of her. <laughs> so the matter was settled somewhat and Ada and his wife and the entourage of neighbours who had come along went on their way to go back home. But as Ada and his wife now holding hands as they walked along the road, Ada turned to his wife and said, you know, dear, I'm very worried about Father, about leaving him in that place because, you know, Dad was never very religious. <laughs> <laughs> So this sums up illusion for us, we could say, in many ways. But it raises a question that leads us into another field of endeavor or inquiry. And that is, we know that we've come to a place where our senses and our awareness have revealed to us that nothing is what it seems. But then, what is it that we embark on and what happens for us when we traverse that which lies between our sensory awareness of nothing being as it seems and that absolute, that absolute that says anything that changes is not real. So in the coming days, through story, we're going to explore this journey or what it is that lies between arriving at the place of sensory awareness, perception, because this is what it is for us to recognize that nothing is what it seems. Perception constantly changing. But what is it that lies between this sensory awareness and arrival at an absolute, which is anything that changes is not real. Just stick around. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you.